And welcome back. So Africa is trading behind in efforts to meet the United Nations 17 sustainable development goals, but are likely to catch up quickly by closing the gaps in scientific knowledge of the continent's microbe, microbiomes. Now, in a call to action to African policy makers and scholars, a group of mostly African microbiologists have highlighted the importance of urgently increasing research into Africa's woefully understudied microbiomes, microbial communities found in soils, water, plants, and the guts of animals and humans. To explain all of this as microbiologist and research at the University of Pretoria, Professor Tulani Makalanyani. Very good evening to you. Thank you so much for speaking to us. So let's just first start with this term micro microbiomes. What exactly is it? Please explain the distinction, especially when we talk about Africa's microbiomes. Thanks, thanks a lot, uh, Tepiso, and thanks for the opportunity to speak to you. So you actually know what the term means. Uh, in the last section, you were talking about cholera. Uh, cholera is a bacteria, right? Uh, and I know that uh, most people would know what viruses are uh, at this stage having gone through the whole COVID pandemic. So the term microbiome essentially describes microbial communities that are found within a particular area. So this area might be you know, on the surface of your skin, it might be in soil, or indeed it might be in water. So that's what a microbiome is. Okay, so, um, it, and, and I know this, is, this may be pedestrian, but is there only one form of microbiome? Okay. Microbiomes is easier for me to say than microbiomes, but just is there only one sort? How do you distinguish what you're talking about? You spoke about uh, cholera, and if one understands then what is involved, there, one is then trying to identify in other places. Yeah, so there are. Um the microbiome essentially talks to microorganisms and the locations in which they are found, right? So these microorganisms can be constituted by essentially up to trillions of different microorganisms. So you know of a few that make you sick. Cholera is one, COVID is another, that's a particular virus, but there is essentially millions of microorganisms that are out there. The vast majority of these organisms are actually things that don't make you sick, but they actually can give us very good um, products. Uh, mm. So things like fermented foods, for instance, those are things that are, come from microbial communities. Mm. So I'm just trying to understand then, what do we know in understanding from African policymakers, scholars and uh, uh, scientists such as yourself about microbiomes and uh, why is the research so scant? Why is there a difference between the global south and the global north on the knowledge that we have? Yeah, so... Um, most of the research that's been done on microbial communities has focused on the global north. So let's take one particular instance. So we know, for instance, that gut microbiomes, so these are the microbiomes that are inside your body, are instrumental in doing things like breaking down uh, compounds that your body cannot digest. So this is important because it gives you nutrition and helps you live better. Most of the previous research that's been done has been focused on the gut microbiomes of people in Europe and other Western populations. Um, and there's very little work that's been done on African microbiomes. We know that as Africans, we have very different diets. For instance, we eat things like maheu and other fermented diets that make uh, a difference in terms of the gut microbiomes that are inside us. So the implications of this very diet and what it actually means for our abilities to break down certain nutrients or in fact the health outcome, that's work that's essentially not been done previously. So a group of us have been calling in the last uh, few years for expanded efforts towards studying the gut microbiomes, particularly of African individuals. So what have been the distinct differences, especially when you talk about diet? In fact, I was actually reading an article not so uh, long ago that was looking at how to improve uh, uh, the gut um, 
is, I'm not sure if it's uh, bacterial or microbiomes, as you say, uh, about eating food with certain live cultures. So as you say, the diets are different. So if we're talking about food security and comparing the different diets, then how do we then make use of it to be able to meet the SDG goals? Mm. So what we were calling for in our, um, uh, our comment fee is not just related to diets or microbiomes related to diets, but in fact for studies to look at microbes across all different types of environments. In the clip that's been shown, you're showing microbiomes that may be related to the oceans, for, for example. So we know that uh, harmful chemicals that come from waste, from, from water streams that go into the ocean ultimately affect the fish that's in the ocean and comes back to us because we die, we eat the food that comes from the ocean. So if there is a disturbance in the type of microbes um, that we consume, that ultimately has long-term health uh, detrimental effects on us. So again, to come back to the point that I made previously, a lot of, of what happens regarding African microbiomes is essentially unstudied. We don't know anything about the gut microbiomes, for instance, of African individuals uh, and how and what type of factors may cause or lead to differences between the gut microbiota. Equally, when you look at things like soils, we are at the infancy or just the beginning of beginning to understand the type of microorganisms that are found in African soils. And we know, for example, that African soils are some of the most diverse ecosystems globally. So the type of microorganisms that are there have you know important implications as if this wasn't complicated enough so in your commentary on African biomes matter you talk about the combination of biotic and abiotic factors when you talk about soil fertility and check pathogens can you just explain that a little bit more in layman's terms so the kind of surveillance that you're doing uh, to help us uh, as you mentioned deal with food security issues yeah, so there, that's part of the complication when it comes to looking at the microbiome, right? So if you look at how, for instance, um, differences in chemical components in soil, those types of factors may lead to differences in the type of microbiomes that you get in a particular type of fo uh, soil. If you're looking at different forms of agriculture, for instance, if you're using um, um, fertilizers, that leads to a difference in the type of soil microbial communities that you could have in a particular form of agriculture. So one of the examples is that, um, you know, previous studies in other uh, regions of the world have shown that certain types of uh, agriculture lead to the type of antimicrobial resistance um, pathogens that are found within those particular soils. So, uh, understanding the type of microbial communities that are present in that environment may help us adjust our forms of agriculture to have much more sustainable forms of agriculture with reduced uh, impact or, or products that produce different types of antimicrobials. And just finally, when we talk about health, I mean, you have mentioned that it, there's evidence that uh, uh, in Africa, our microbiomes are possibly African sea ecosystems are more genetically diverse. So if we talk about precision medicine, how does this all come together? Yeah, so that goes back again uh, to looking at the gut microbiome, right? So we know, I mentioned earlier, that the type of microbes that are present in your gut determines how your body breaks down certain compounds. So if we look at uh, you know, populations that may use, for instance, antiretrovirals, um, the type of antiretrovirals that are uh, prevalent and used have been developed by looking at cohorts of participants in Western populations. They have different diets. So uh, the type of diets that they have determines the type of gut microbiomes that are there. So if we are aiming to produce what is so-called precision medicine, you need to know exactly the type of gut microbiomes that are present in African populations so that when you are producing tailored or precision drugs, you could tailor those towards African uh, 
African populations. And that means the health outcomes will be eventually much more successful because you would be targeting drugs that are geared or tailored towards Africans. I feel like I've just gone back to school and I, I don't even think I've raised a pass, but thank you so much. I'm going to educate you so late at night, but thank you very no. much for uh, having an interest in this topic. If you're not learning, you're not living, but thank you so much for explaining that yeah. to us. Uh, Professor Tulani Makalanyani, 